Hello and welcome to a very frosty Glencoe this morning. Now, some of you who watched my videos before, you'll know I do a lot of photography around the Glencoe area. But I've got a miracle because I've got three days off with no interruptions. So I've decided to go and spend them three days to my favourite location for photography in the whole of the UK. And that is in fact the Isle of Skye. So I'm going to do a road trip. We're going to head up to the Isle of Skye and spend three days going around at different locations. So you'll probably get about three videos coming out consecutively every two weeks. So look out for the next video if you haven't seen them. And so the plan of attack is, is to head up to the Isle of Loch Elsh, get over the Sky Bridge, up to Broadford. And then my first video, this one, we're going to head up over to Algol get sunset at Algol and then we're going to drive all the way over to the fairy pools at Glen Brittle. Spend the night there and then that allows me to get sunrise at the fairy pools. Then what we're going to do for the second video is we're going to drive from the fairy pools and we're going to head up to Ness Point and then at Ness Point we're going to get sunset there which should be brilliant and then once sunset's gone there then we're going to drive all the way up to my favourite location in the whole of the UK which is the Kerrang. We're going to overnight at the Kerrang and that allows me to get up nice and early for the sunrise. And then I'm going to head on home and probably we'll see what the light is like at the Old Manor store. I might stop, I might not, but maybe I'll stop at the Old Manor store and we'll do a little video there as well, a little mini video at the end. So come and join me. Let's head out on the road trip to the Isle of Skye. Well, hello and welcome to a very cold and chilly Isle of Skye. Now, uh, my first episode of the Sky Road Trip, um, I was in the final place was the Fairy Pools and I stayed at Glen Brittle. Now, I've driven from Glen Brittle and the plan of attack is I'm going to get up to Ness Point today. Uh, and hopefully the sun is just fantastic. You can see this beautiful light on me. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. The sunrise weren't so great this morning at Glen Brittle, but when I get up to Ness Point, I'm kind of hoping we're going to get a decent sunset. I'm heading this way and there's not much in the clouds about, so fingers crossed it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to jump in the van, I'm going to head on out and let's head all the way up to Ness Point. Okay, that's me just arrived at the car park and yeah that's looking pretty good look at that sun it's looking fantastic a few clouds as well so we're going to get a little bit of backlit nice pinkness so this might be an absolute peach it really is i'm coming around look at that view that is just out of this world isn't it that is absolutely stunning so uh, i'm going to get me bits and bobs head over to the lighthouse itself and get in a good position just for this sunset Okay, so once you get to the car park, then you head over and you can see the crag, but you can't see the lighthouse, and then you've got to get yourself up to the top here. Um, and then you find a space for all the other photographers that are all hanging around here, all listening to me. <laughs> so as you can see, I've got the rock there, there's a lighthouse, the sun is looking brilliant. So I'm really excited about this, this is looking really great. There's some clouds in the sky, so hopefully they're all going to go pink. So now it's just a waiting game. I need the sun to come over a little bit because uh, the crag's in shade a little bit here. So uh, it needs to come over a little bit more, but it's just starting to light up now. So it's looking fantastic. So I might, as opposed to this morning's rubbish light, I might get some quality lights this afternoon. So let's wait a bit longer and then I've got myself set up. Good composition. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, I've just set myself up into a nice composition. I think it's working pretty good. Um, what I've got is I've got the some crags in the left-hand side of the shot. I'll flip you around and show you what I've got. Um, I've got some crags in the left-hand side. Um, so they're pretty much just here somewhere. You can see there, and that gives me that foreground interest and just give me that depth to the shot. And then what I've got is I've got the crag coming down here. And what I've done is, you'll see my tripod is really high. It's really high up. And the reason for that is what I want is a bit of separation between the top of the crag and the horizon. So the lighthouse, the light's just coming on now. So that's looking pretty good. The sun's okay. It's looking good. There's a big lump of cloud just onto the right, which I'm a bit nervous about because it's looking a bit ominous, which is where that sun might go. So uh, I hope not because that means I'm coming back here in a few months' time. Oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> it really is. So there's the horizon and then there's this little bubble of cloud and then there's a flat horizon again. And that little bubble of cloud is just where the sun is setting. I'll flip you around, you can have a look at it. Um, but yeah, can you see there's just that little bit of cloud and now what's happened is it's now come out of the cloud and now it's going right below the horizon. So, oh. <laughs> The one that got away, I think, the one that got away. So we've lost all the light on the, on the rocks and the lighthouse here, so it's just not coming out. I think in hindsight, because it sets quite close uh, to the lighthouse from this time of year, I think your probably best time of year is you're talking kind of April time, maybe May a little bit. I don't think you want to be too far over June because it's a good way over there. But uh, yeah, you kind of want to be sort of April, May time. And that way the, the sun is setting a little bit further over to the right hand side of the lighthouse. And that should bathe it in colour there. So it's OK, sure. I've got it set up. It's bracketed because it's a big dynamic range. But we'll, we'll work on it. I've, I've uh, focus stacked as well because some of these boulders in the foreground are pretty good. So um, we'll stitch it together. We'll have a play. And if the shot works, here's the shot. So that's me at the Kerrang now. Uh, it was a bit of a long drive, but actually the road weren't too bad to be honest, because I was a bit worried about it getting a bit icy. So I've arrived at the Kerrang, I've parked up, and just a bit of luck really, I don't know how this happened, but when I arrived, the moon was just poking in on the left hand side of the uh, of the ridge of the Kerrang there, which was fantastic. So I've run out and taken a few shots with my camera. It's so dark I couldn't do any video, it was just it was just impossible to see anything. But actually it might work out as a nice photo. I'll probably have to work on it a little bit because I did have to take a close-up of the moon to get the you know the complete detail of the moon so it weren't out of focus. Um, but I'll have a play about with that. If it works, here it is. So that was a bit of a chilly one again last night, but we're here now and I'm so excited because I'm here on my favourite place, probably on the planet, and welcome to the Kerrang.
So the Kerrang itself is just north of Portree. You get to Portree and you keep driving north. And actually when you dr drive that, you drive what's called Trotternis, and it's because the Kerrang is part of the Trotternis Ridge. And the Trotternis Ridge is about 40 kilometres long and places two kilometres wide. And it's formed by, uh, you've got Jurassic sedimentary rock on top of basaltic sills that have been intruded in the Paleocene. And the weight of those sills have just collapsed the sedimentary rock below and you get this big massive landslide. And that's what you get, these beautiful, as, as it drops, it tips back a bit and you get this beautiful landscape. And this landscape is like no other on the planet. It's so unique to the north of Skye. OK, I'm going to find a few compositions. You are sport for choice. The sun's coming up. I've probably got about another half an hour, 20 minutes. So get some comps sorted out and then we'll see how we go. Okay, I haven't come too far from the car park and what I've done is I've got myself into a nice spot where I've got a nice crag in the foreground here to give me some depth. I wanted, there's two lockens uh, just a bit off the distance there and I wanted them in the shot really because they reflect that lovely pink light if the pink light's going to come. So I've got some depth, I've got some interest in the bottom there and then it just drops off and disappears off of these different landslips going off into the distance there. I'll show you the composition I've got. So here's the camera here and here's my two lockens, one, two over there and then you'll see this crag here is quite prominent, it's very dominant here which I quite like. I've got to be careful because the sun's going to come up here, I'm hoping it's going to get lit a little bit, I am a little bit in the shade of it but what I need it to be lit a little bit because it's kind of blending into this little peak here so hopefully there's a bit of snow on that peak so it should hopefully give me some contrast here and then as you can see they sort of disappear off in the distance here's the sun rising it's looking promising there's not no cloud low down so fingers crossed this is looking promising and hopefully this will all get back left and nice and pink so now okay now it's just a waiting game so i've got a cup of coffee i think i'm all ready to go so we're just gonna have to wait for that sun to rise and hopefully set everything nice and pink Well, everything's starting to go pink. That low cloud is definitely getting a bit pinker. I look behind me and it's quite blue. And then I look forward and there's this very pink sort of hint to the sky. It's looking really good. I have got, <laughs> I've been here before right enough, but I've got high hopes. I don't see any clouds where the sun's going to pop its little head over. So I can't see anything that's going to cause me any problems. So I don't know, I'm getting a little bit giddy here. Hopefully I won't fall over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not too much longer, but everything's gone very pink, so I think it's time to take some shots, I reckon. That was just spectacular. Well worth the drive and well worth the wait. I, I, I'd never seen that light was just incredible. It really was. What a great location. I, I, I can tell you there's nowhere else in the UK that comes close and even in the world, I'll be honest with you, that comes close to that with that sunrise. Oh dear, I've made it. I've just, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. Now the good thing is with this location is it is just surrounded by beauty so it, it's kind of hard to actually take a really rubbish shot here you can take some good shots i want great shots but it's really hard to take some rubbish shots because the, the the beauty is just so around now the good thing is with this location is wherever you look there's beauty it's just so fantastic so 
what I've done is, is I've lined up another shot and, and I'd like to say I've walked for hours and got another. All I did is I turned the camera around on the tripod instead of looking into the sun, I've looked away from the sun. And that gets me down to what actually is the Kerrang. So I'll flip you around and show you what I'm looking at. So what I've got is I've got this tree in the foreground here, this tree in the foreground, and then it just goes off to the actual Kerrang, which is just over there. Uh, and it just goes, I love this little sort of like shark's fin here, which is amazing. Well, because this is facing the sun, it's just all going to go golden and, and beautiful. So it is just a great location as well. So it, it didn't take much effort. I've just turned the, the camera around and that's why I've got another great shot. So if you like this shot, here is this shot. Now the problem I sometimes find with uh, YouTube, photography YouTubers especially, is they tend to sort of overwhelm with all these different photos and I like to keep just two or three at the most photos to show you just to, to, to keep it sort of simple. But I'm sorry but <laughs> I've got, I couldn't help myself. I've had to, there's, this is a drone shot, I've got the drone up, I've got some beautiful footage of the drone and I've got a lovely drone shot and it was just, it was just perfect composition with the road coming up i can't show you because obviously i can't get up high to show you but there was the, the road sort of zigzagged up and then i've got the two little lockins and everything else going on in the background so while it was up there it just the composition just in my head just went wow that looks fantastic so i have taken a shot with a drone which sometimes is pretty good this is a 20 megapixel drone i've got the uh, DJI Mavic 2 Pro. So that's a uh, 20, it's one of these Hasselblad uh, cameras as well. So it's actually pretty good quality. I think if I blew it up massive, uh, it'd be a bit of a problem, but it's actually not too bad. So I've taken this great drone shot. I'm really pleased with it. So if you like this drone shot, here's another shot. So that's the sun just going up now. It's, uh, it's still lovely golden light. I mean, it's been up for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes now. It's getting quite high in the sky. But what it's gonna do is it is gonna creep behind these clouds just at the top here. It's gonna start creeping out. Look at that beautiful golden light. It's just fantastic. What a morning, what an absolute morning. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head off and potentially we'll have a look at store. Do I wanna do Old Man of Store? I've given you a lot already. I will potentially go and have a look at the old manor store and see what that looks like. So what a great finish to my Sky Road trip. I hope you watch both episodes definitely had a great time and sky is just so beautiful i think my only criticism with sky is is as opposed to glencoe is glencoe all the locations are just right next to you and you spend a lot of time photographing whereas my problem with sky is is the great locations are so spread out it's such a big island that it, you spend a lot of time driving just to get to the lees locations but when you get light like that and when you get a scene like that it's definitely worth it it really is 
Now, I hope you liked what you saw. I certainly did. Um, but if you did, if you just stop for a second, head on down to the bottom of the page and there's a little thumbs up button. Just give me a thumbs up before you do anything else. It just helps massively with my channel. And if you really like what you see and like this content, then click on the subscribe button. And then even if the little click on the little bell that comes out, and that gives you a notification every time I post new content. What a wonderful trip. I'm buzzing, I really am. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Before I head out, I've got to get some energy in me, you know, I've got a big day ahead on this adventure. So uh, yeah, I've just had to cook myself a nice full cooked breakfast. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, the dog's looking at me. All right, you can have a sausage. But it's just so beautiful. The light is just fantastic right now. And because it's all covered in snow, I might not get this opportunity again. So what I've decided to do is maybe squeeze another episode in. So as you get closer, it's quite obvious where he is and he becomes quite an imposing figure, the old man of store. There he is up there, look. There he is. I hope he doesn't keel over of old age and roll down on top of me, because if he does, I'm in a very precarious position. Okay, I'm going to show you the shot. It's, it's so basic, it's really easy. Um, there's store there, look, the actual big mountain of store. And then you've got um, the, the three sort of needles there, and you've got the old man of store there in the middle and you get this lovely lock at the left hand side as well and then you're looking down over to Rassi and all that area over there which is just beautiful as well. I want great shots, but it's really hard to take some rubbish shots because the, the, the beauty is just so around us. Oh, you're waffling. And they've collapsed and the whole of the basaltic... Uh, oh dear, that's it. Rubbish. Well, what a great fresh... Fridges? What's that? <laughs> well, what a great finish to my Sky Road trip. Uh, I hope you'd like to watch both episodes.